Imagine you've given up your life on Earth to create a new world on Mars. You've signed up for a three-year mission that will involve getting on a spaceship, living in a capsule full of people you've never met, cohabitating with a hundred heterogeneous professions, amongst other stressors you've yet to find out about. Now I want you to look around the room. This is our spaceship. You're the engineer. You're the chef, you're the physicist, and you're the doctor. A tiny society, each of us with a critical role to play, both on Mars but also along the way. Now I want you to think about the fact that we're all about to get really, really, really sick. The microgravity of space travel will degrade your bones and atrophy your muscles, while the cosmic radiation of deep space will bombard your DNA and basically create chaos seen only by victims of nuclear bombs. Over time, our tiny society will have to deal with the consequences. Remember the chef here? Well, whenever she gets sick, not only will you be taking care of her, but you'll also be flipping flapjacks. <laughs> Uh, bedpans, IVs, around-the-clock help. I hope your second profession was nursing. Let me give you an example. Scott Kelly has spent more time in space than any other human on the face of the planet. And we know from studying his experience exactly what long-term exposure to space does to the human body. First comes the rashes, then the weakness, and then the impairment in eyesight. Eventually, his exposure to radiation was equivalent to 10 chest x-rays every single day, which is 30 times more than any other human being on Earth. Every day, he is playing Russian roulette with fatal cancers. When Kelly came home, he was a mess, and he was only up there for about a third of the time it takes to get to and from Mars. When the first pioneers crossed the Atlantic Ocean, they were scared. They had no idea what they were getting themselves into. This brave new frontier we're about to embark on does not look like Star Trek. It looks a lot more like the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. <laughs> Pioneering space is something that many scientists and adventurers alike want to see happen, and I want to see that happen too. But the truth is, we have no idea what the harsh environs of space will do to the human body, and we have no idea what that means for us on our mission to Mars. But, okay guys, there, there is a silver lining. But first, we need to talk about space viruses. Let me take you back to Earth for a second, okay? Remember growing up when you would share drinks with your friends at birthday parties, when germs were something that you called cooties but you didn't acknowledge them? <laughs> Remember your first kiss? Okay, sometime along that way, you caught a little virus called Epstein-Barr virus. This virus you might otherwise known as mononucleosis or the kissing disease. This virus, which is living peacefully inside of you right now, is doing just fine. It, it will live inside of you for the rest of your life, going completely unnoticed, just kind of like your crush at work. <laughs> well, what can I say? Um, some of you have been symptomatic of the disease, while others will claim that you've never felt signs of it. This is wrong. Almost all humans are carriers of Epstein-Barr virus, whether or not you've showed signs of it. Girl, I know what you did on spring break. <laughs> <laughs> there are circumstances under which the virus will reactivate when you're least expecting it. When you have decreased immune functionality, the virus reactivates. When you're stressed, the virus reactivates. The virus will reactivate into cancer, which could cause your ultimate demise, or mononucleosis, which, no big deal, it'll just leave you tired for days on end. Okay, so, basically, decreased immune system and stress. That's basically in the welcome pamphlet for a mission to Mars. The environment of space is a cold, harsh, bellowing one, one that leaves the worst for your body and the worst in Epstein-Barr. When I first studied, started studying Epstein-Barr virus and the environs of space, I thought the answer was research, right? If we understood and we researched more about what Epstein-Barr virus does, then maybe we can understand how to solve it. Okay, but the problem here is that 
in order for us to research and understand Epstein-Barr virus and astronauts, we'd have to recreate that environment here on Earth. Okay, so hands up, anyone who wants to be inundated with radiation and be strapped to a bed for three years. Um, but it's in the name of science. Okay, so basically the point is no medical review board would ever approve that type of experiment. Okay, so we could experiment on mice. But pity the poor mice. Epstein-Barr virus is such a nasty beast of a disease that once the mice get it, they're probably going to die. So... The point here is, basically, the only thing we can do is observe astronauts whenever they go to space. These poor, brave souls that are going to make the first mission are, are kind of our best test subjects. And I know I've kind of painted going to Mars as a death sentence, but it's likely one to teach humanity important lessons about the way illnesses work in the human body, about the way astronauts suffer, the way they feel pain, and yes, the way they die, and, and the way they get cancer. But once we know the actual cause of a problem, we are that much closer to the solution, the solution, how to cure cancer. Look, <laughs> space sucks, <laughs> but it's also beautiful. It's where humanity is heading for, and it's basically going to be the only thing that provides for us once the Earth is kaput. <sighs> but how do we get there in one piece? From an epidemiological and virological perspective, there are a lot of things that we need to work out before we make our trip to space. But by studying these astronauts and by studying infectious disease, we will know so much more, not only about the astronauts, but also about people on Earth that suffer from cancer and, and mononucleosis and so many diseases. This little virus, which we don't acknowledge, might be able to cure cancer. Cure cancer, check. Colonize a new land, check. This little virus that we don't acknowledge might be able to turn the world on its head. Thank you.